Hello, everybody. This is Tanita, the author of The Power of Shut Up Grace. And I just wanted to come to you today very briefly to share a message with you that God placed on my heart. I would like to talk very briefly uh, about this tongue, the organ, the small organ that's in our body, but yet it is so powerful, so small, but yet so powerful. Y'all remember the uh, nursery rhyme? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt me. I'm here to tell you that that is nothing but a lie. That, that was just for children and for our, when we were children. Because that is a very lie from the pit of hell from which it originated. Words may not break your bones, but I tell you what, they're so powerful. You'll feel like you got a broken bone because you will have a broken heart. It can pierce your side. It can pierce your chest. It can cause all kinds of emotions to erupt inside of you. Migraines, uh, depression, suicidal thoughts, homicidal thoughts. Words have impact. Have you ever thought about how um, children, when they grow up in a household where there's a lot of negativity or people speaking negative to them or speaking um, down to them, how even 20, 30 years later they're still struggling because of those words that were said to them, maybe by their mom or their dad, someone who should have been uplifting them, how they still impact them to this day, that they struggle with um, mental health issues, suicidal issues, all kinds of issues based on the very words that were said to them. I'm not talking about physical abuse, y'all. I'm just talking about verbal abuse from this little bitty organ in our body that has so much power. <clears throat> The Bible says in Proverbs 18 and 12, the, the, the tongue has so much power that the Bible says in Proverbs 18 and 12 that life and death is in the power of the tongue. So we know that that's very, very powerful. If I can speak life over a situation just as well as I can speak death over one, just based on the very words that I say out of my mouth, that's powerful. Sometimes the tongue has been referred to as a sword, as a razor, as a knife. Something really, really sharp that's powerful. So raise your hand if you know that you have a razor in your mouth. Don't be afraid or don't be embarrassed because I can't see it anyway. But God sees it. And that's your first step to deliverance. That's your first step to reaching out to God and crying out to him. Asking him for deliverance and help with your tongue. So... If you will, for just a moment, allow me to come into your house. I'm knocking at your door. I promise I won't plan to stay long. I just, I'll stay long enough to have a cup of tea. Today, I posted the scripture from Proverbs 14 and 1 that talks about the wise woman who builds her house and with her very own hands, the foolish one that tears her house down. Wow. If I could be transparent for a moment, I would just tell you that I used to be that foolish woman. If you are a person who are quick to pop off, argue with your mate, cut them down, tear them down, beat them down, demasculate your mate with words, I am calling you out and telling you that you are a foolish woman. That's right. I said it. You are a foolish woman. If you post on your social media platforms talking about your mate, if in social environments you're always negative, Always trying to make your mate the butt end of the joke. Always having something negative to say. You get into it with your mate. You calling your mama. You calling your daddy, your sister, your brother, your friends, whoever. To dog out or ridicule your mate. You are a foolish woman. Then you wonder why he shuts down. Why he stays away from home. Or when, he's around, when you're around, he's quiet. You wonder why? It's because of that mouth. That ineffective communication that you have. And those time and time again, demasculating your man to you have killed his drive and his motivation to even want to please you, to even want to talk to you, to even want to be around you. We are supposed to use wise women. We are supposed to use our words to support our mates. We're supposed to encourage them, uplift them, build them up and edify them. The Bible says in Ephesians 5 and 23 that the husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head of the church. In what part of that scripture does it say that you are supposed to be the head of your husband? Just out of order, just foolish, for no reason. So today, 
I want to challenge each and every person. If this is you, and if it's not you, maybe you know someone that is fitting for. I challenge you right now to get on your knees and begin to pray and call out to the Lord and ask God to deliver you from your tongue. Ask him for conviction and discernment to know when to speak conviction that when you speak out of turn or when you're speaking death and you're not building up that God will convict you in the midst of in the middle of your sentence and he will stop you in your tracks and you will have shut of grace to be able to press the pause button to think before speaking to use wisdom before speaking to be conscious of your words because once you put those words out there you cannot take them back people will forgive you but they will not forget how you made them feel so I want you to think about that on today. Again, I thank you for listening. If this word is not for you, then I ask that you share the video. Maybe it'll be for someone else on your timeline that struggles with their tongue just as I did. I also, again, have the book, The Power of Shut Up Grace, that can be purchased off my website, www.arthurtanitasmith.com or on Amazon or even on Barnes & Noble. Get the book. Read the book. Do the workbook. Do the work. Work on your mouth, people. Work on your mouth.